Hello friends and lovers, and welcome back to a purely relaxing experience and an exploration of a day in the life of an independent artist. Thank you for being here. So we begin today actually with no time to uh, read or journal once again. If you had to choose between reading or journaling, which one would you choose? I'm finding that I'm choosing to read over journaling, and I don't know what that says about me. Like, I want to fill my mind with other people's words than my own words. But actually, this Thursday is a special day for this person in a long-distance relationship because she's uh, getting a visitor in the evening, which is her partner. I don't know if you can, you can all hear the um, dogs in my neighborhood. Um, at about 5 p.m. Pacific time, all of the dogs um, gather and it sounds like they are about to attack, but they it's just their barking. We are changing the sheets. We have to get up and do that. And by the way, yesterday I woke up at 7 a.m., which is normal, but I was like, I have so much to do before 8 a.m. when I think it's actually Californians have to deal with this often because our meetings with people in other parts of the world, such as, you know, Europe or the East Coast, we have early starts. <laughs> And sometimes late end. Before I'm beginning my 8 a.m. session, I'm actually um, plugging in my headset because today is a VR day and one needs to remember to plug in their headset. It is one of my kryptonites. It's one of my main issues that I struggle to, to, to do is like remember to plug that shit in. So, so plug it in. Plug it in, people. So while that's charging, we're gonna, after we drink our water, obviously we're gonna prepare for our daily workout. Daily workout is a bit of a bizarre, it's like a, I'm doing this because for my mental health, but who, who knows? Okay, so when that's over, I am about to, I have a coaching session with a client who is in, he's in upstate New York. And this is a bit of my like, okay, I didn't have time to like put on the fit. So this is the the look. It's like you put on your sweater and for some reason I feel like a baseball cap makes me look like it's an intentional moment and then a little bit of lip and we're like good to go. And here you can observe the, the beverages of the day. And this is like the new morning ritual as of March, I guess, which is like actually making sure I have wa water. <laughs> I don't know how much I believe that the hydration, I don't know that I believe the hydration hype so much, but I do confine myself to my desk, usually in like fits of anxiety. And so part of the fits of anxiety are like, oh my God, I, I sit there like overwhelmed by all of the various tasks. And so I need to, when I have like my two different, my caffeine and my hydration, then I can just sit there for actually a, a very long amount of time. And so the other thing that like, you know, when you like woke up at seven and you started cleaning and then you did your workout and then you're like preparing, the thing that's always going through my head is like, I didn't go to bed early enough last night and I didn't wake up, I didn't wake up enough early enough today. And I'm already beginning the mental landscape of feeling guilt <laughs> about everything that I haven't done yet. And by the way, it's like 7.45 AM and I'm already like, oh, you know, making coffee is so much work, but we are here and we are ready to go. I don't know how much people actually feel this kind of anxiety from the beginning of the day, which is like, oh my gosh, I've gotta be so productive. It feels like I have to earn <laughs> a good thing in the day. Like if you like are productive, you get to feel good. And if you're not productive, you will inevitably feel bad. And I don't even know how to define productive anymore because it's like, if you got up and did a workout and you made your coffee, then like, uh, and then it's 8 a.m. That's honestly, when I say that objectively, if I were talking to someone else, I'd be like, that's a productive day. But for myself, it definitely doesn't feel like that. So anyway, I am a creative coach. <laughs> really selling myself here. I work with various creatives on their various creative projects and endeavors. And I am willing to meet with people at 8 a.m. I did it twice this week. And it's good. It's actually, it brings me a lot of joy. How's your day going? You know, it's good. I don't know about you. We have children, so that changes everything. But I have a weird affliction, a post-pandemic and mid-pandemic affliction, which is just like, I don't really set alarms. Sometimes I need the alarm, but I need the alarm like 10% of the time. Uh -huh. The rest of the time, my system has anxiety. And it's like, should we be up? <laughs> is everybody okay? Yeah, better or worse, right? I'm loving it. Like... I'm usually up an hour before everybody in the household, and that's like definitely the shortest hour of the day. 
<laughs> like my, so I'm just gonna fit this in while my brother sits inside the McDonald's. I'll sit in the McDonald's parking lot in my truck and do this interview. But that's pretty punk rock, first of all. So I'm digging it. I'm. I bring yes. up the tripod because if you get into the habit of bringing it with you to snow fort, like as part of your, you know, then you're just gonna set it up and you can start rolling right. and you can, I mean, some days I just like roll for what, and it's like, cool, this could be an hour of footage I don't need, but at least there's like, you know, stuff. And it's often with the tripod schlep that helps me, like, it's like this. So I'm like, you know, oh. here we go. So since you've got the tripod under your arm, you're like, well, I've come this far. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I do hour long coaching sessions and then I send a lot of notes afterwards and I love talking to other people about their projects and helping them problem solve because it's a lot easier to do than to solve my own problems, which I still work on solving, but. So after we get out of Adam's session, amazing person, amazing individual, opening up a bookstore upstate, we love to see it. Today is a VR day and by that I mean I am play testing another person's session, another person's creative project. Project. And by playtesting, that's kind of a weird way of saying, I don't know, you're, you're, you're contributing feedback to someone's new performance or someone's new game or someone's new escape room or whatever it is. You participate actively. Do you want me to try? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, it, there's an option, but it doesn't activate anything. VR in promotion and in advertisement is really sexy. It looks really cool. It looks really futuristic. You've got this thing strapped to your head and you've got minimum three point tracking, if not full body tracking. I mean, full body tracking definitely has a sexier look than three point, but it's like, oh, you know, you like the setup. The In theory, it's really sexy and really cool because you're setting up to do this futuristic that you're participating in this futuristic this physical thing so it's like here's this is what it looks like so this is the setup you know you're like drawing your your boundary your room scale and all of that um looks you know it looks really physical and interesting and like you know you're just part of some modern world phenomenon that's thrilling really and the reality <laughs> That's the expectation, you know, but here's the, the reality. Now, the performance that I made, I've, I've um, created a show on virtual reality, and that performance is in intentionally very physical in nature because I, one, want it to be, and two, as an actor, you have to use your whole body to display emotion. However, not everybody's performances are like that in VR, right? Like, everybody's doing different stuff, so whatever, all good. But here is, here's actually what it looks like oftentimes to be attending a VR show. <laughs> and like, I'm just standing there, you know? Okay, so I, I participated in this event and then I, I filled out a form actually in the same day of like how, I, how it went, how I experienced it. And you know what? I'm always grateful to be back in the headset and thinking about how we make art in this form, in the metaverse. And, you know, as per my episode last week, it's clearly something that people are more interested in than, than a lot of the other stuff I do. <laughs> I think that participating in other people's ex experiments, experiences in their performances, whatever it is in your field is so helpful because it helps you think about what you want to do. So this is the, the makeup ritual of the day, which is like, oh, I guess I've got some outings sort of. I've got a thing I'm going to later. So here we go. And you get to like in the moment, I'm like, finally, I've had time. Finally had like the free moment to put my fit on, my OOTD. And you know, in this moment, I'm listening to Ezra Klein review the State of the Union, some really nerdy shit. And I'm also simultaneously thinking about VR and thinking about the performance and thinking about what I would do or what I want to do or how I'm going to do it. And it gives you sometimes this ritual stuff, like actually going for a run or putting on makeup is a good space for me to be doing something also cleaning you all know by now i guess this is the third episode i cut out i didn't include all the cleaning i did yesterday because it did feel a little bit boring <laughs> even for me looking at it i'm like wow this is a lot like you really 
it seems it's clearly something I do regularly to deal with all of the thoughts in uh, in my brain, just like the ritual of getting fitted. And I didn't want to. I I wanted you to have the full fit. So here's the here's the skirt. Um, you just you you don't get a lot of full fits here so far. So there you are. That's a gift for you. Carrots and hummus is the hot girl snack of the day. When you hit a certain hour, where you're like, I'm actually really hungry, and I am a vegan, so hummus and veg is actually I actually really like it though. It's I know it's like kind of a boring like vegan snack, but I'm actually really into it. So I've also been thinking about how there is so much of me sitting <laughs> on any given day. And it really depends on where I'm at in my life, like what's going on in my life. But like, yo, honestly, I think part of what I'm unve unveiling in this series, I think is true for all of my indie artist pals, is that we definitely spend more of our time sitting at a desk, staring at stuff, answering emails, working on mailing lists. Like yesterday I was like, okay, I'm cleaning out the inbox and opening up like okay the youtube tutorial actually which encouraged me to record in the script today as opposed to outside of it and then edit so for me one of the things i struggle with as a creative who's not reporting to anyone but myself is like okay i'm i'm clear i'm dealing with my inbox today i'm trying to try to get it down to it's one of my neurotic things that i want the inbox to be like down to zero but can your inbox really be down to zero if you need to watch that Descript hour and a half training video? How is that part of your answering emails day? Because suddenly you're like, there you are watching an a, a hour and a half training video and you need to like fill out this form for this like Voyage LA profile, which doesn't really, isn't really going to impact your career, but you're also like, I should just do it because they asked me to. And then it's like something to put my name in a Google. So I don't know, right? And you start to get like, whoa, what do I prioritize? I have my like to-do list. I have my tour. I have some upcoming events. I have some events to build. It just gets like, oh my God, what thing do I need to work on? So that is a big thing that happens for me. And then you're like, you know what? There's so much stuff that I could work on that instead I'm going to, well, I'm going to make a salad. The amount of things a person needs to do in a day when they don't have to do their job overwhelms me. And I think this is an issue of of our societal like s structures that's like on the ones that's no some people really get a joy out of like, oh I'm gonna like I'm do my cooking experience, but I'm just like, I can't feel really tasked by it. I still do it, obviously, but I still feel tasked by it because, again, my productive brain as an artist really comes to get me. One of my things on my to-do list is to donate my clothes via the take back bag. And I was really excited about reporting about the take back bag to y'all, but I actually am not going to do that this week because the QR code like didn't work. I, this is a concept, I'll just explain it really quick. It's a concept where you buy a bag and you fill it with your stuff and then they donate your stuff and then you get like cash to buy more of their stuff. Actually, when I think about it, I'm like, what is this thing? But I, I'll tell you more about it once the QR code actually works. The main point is, have you ever gone to a clothing swap or a Goodwill with your clothes and been like, is this gonna work? Like, is this a good thing that's gonna work? Because my experience of that is like, I'm always like, there is a ton of clothing here. And all this, all this is making me feel is like serious levels of like guilt and, and stress. Anyway, so I feel guilt and stress regardless, but I definitely feel guilt and stress about consuming two landfills. And I am a person who owns a lot of clothes. Please don't judge me. I didn't have a child. Having a child is worse for the planet than owning a lot of clothes. Okay, here we go. I was working on my um, my save the date for my Broken Bone Bathtub premiere in Los Angeles. And I, and I literally said out loud to no one, I was like, how is it 354? Which meant that I went to a Phoenix Tears production. Now check out my resting face here. This is, um, this was wild. I didn't have my camera on for most of the show because I didn't want to, but I'm surprised at my own resting face because I like, I feel like I don't look very smiley. Oh, perfect. It's so good to see all of these lovely faces. 
Uh, we are so excited to have you at the party today. We already had one group of people arrive, so you're fashionably late, which is exactly on time. No problem whatsoever. This is a show called Space Shipped. It is running through the weekend, and it is wonderful, magical, science fiction, rom-com experience created by my very dear friends. Hi, Mallory. You're so good at YouTube, Mallory. Mallory is a real YouTube professional, I will say. And it's a pleasure to get to be able to experience their work and to see all the friends and lovers who come to their work. And I also will say, sorry, I wonder if my resting face is that looks like that because I had stayed up very late the previous night with Megan Markham of Phoenix Tears working on our show that we are performing on Zoom next month called The Tissue Girls as part of my online series, Please Don't Touch the Artist, of which Megan is guest starring. And I was like hit, you know, when you, you know, when you have that moment where you're, you're like, suddenly it hits you that you have had very bad sleep for over a week. My anxiety has been bad. My grief is, I, I just feel like I'm mentally and emotionally kind of at a, a high tense, high tension state often. <laughs> and it's contributing to very poor sleep. And then suddenly you finally get tired and it's when you're at your friend's fucking show. And you're like, I'm at my friend's show. I don't want to be tired. So I drank a diet soda, which upsets my stomach. <laughs> but I like didn't want to have zero energy or like have to turn my camera off or like, I was like, maybe I should like lay down. And then I was like, do not lay down while watching a Zoom show, Siobhan. You do not want to be a sleeping audience member. That would be crazy. But so it, it did like hit and that was a bummer. But I, but I got, I got, I, I bounced back. I often do. I'm, I can rely on myself to bounce back. As someone who still makes quite a lot of online remote work, it's, I'm so grateful that I got to attend more online remote work. And as always, it's a privilege and a pleasure to see Phoenix Tears. I have a link to their website below. And now, suddenly, the day is like over and I'm doing a social thing. It's not a networking thing. It's not like a, this is good for my job thing. It's like, I'm going to my little brother's place in Burbank to his movie night. And his movie night, as it turns out, is a bit of a rager. I, I didn't like to film everybody because I didn't want to like do a whole room span. Like that would be weird. But it was, it was a vibe. Oh, the best movie I've seen this year so far. Don't tell me. I probably the last four. Oh. Watched the movie Damsel. And I have to say, if, if you're gonna watch this movie, <laughs> I do recommend um, having a group of like minimum 12 people who yell a lot because it was a really supreme ideal way of doing it. I also recommend lots of chips and pizza and wine. But you know, my little brother is my closest friend and is absolutely wonderful and is someone that I want to like, he has these things and like, I want to be the sister who like actually can show up sometimes. Even though y'all, I was like, <gasps> I have so much work to do. I have so many things I want to do. And I brought my laptop like a psychopath. I brought it with me. And I think this is a little bit of who I am. I don't know if people can relate, but sometimes you bring the work. You're probably not going to do the work, but you could. I took the laptop out of the bag, not out of the laptop bag, but out of my, not out of the laptop case, but out of my bag. I took it out, but I actually never opened it. I, 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 I hung out with people. I was in the present with people and I was just chatting about movies and laughing and enjoying this damsel experience. And it was good. And I think we have to remember that some days you don't get all of the things done and you still can like be present with people who are not doing anything work related. They're not showing off. They're not promoting their events. They're not trying to sell you on, you know, their labor. It's literally just people coming together. And, and that's why I wanted to, I wanted to be there and I was successful. And then I actually stopped filming. So here I am leaving darker actually, even than when I left, I'm leaving Burbank to pick my partner up from the airport. And I had this whole thought that I would like film him coming to my car at, you know, 1.30 in the morning. And I didn't, um, I was so excited to see him that I, I stopped filming for the day and I immediately crashed. And that's a good thing for me, y'all, because the last two times I've made these, I was actually up for a minute longer than when I recorded. And by a minute, I mean a lot longer because my brain was just like not done. But last night I blessedly got some sleep. I got to see two shows yesterday as part of my work day, which is incredible. And you always learn from other people's work, which is not, which is why you should always go. And two, well, not, that's not the only reason why. Also community matters. <laughs> Having a creative community <laughs> is like, very important. And then number two, 
wait, what was my list again? Was I making a list? Okay. So seeing people's experiences helps to solidify your experience. And so I had a very rich day in being with other creatives. And even when you see stuff that you're like, I'm not sure how I feel about that, it still informs so much of your own self. And you can also, ideally if you love it, then you get inspiration. Or maybe you didn't totally love it, but you still got inspiration. I believe in it very fully to try to go to as many things as you physically can. Provided it's not like something you actively know you're going to dislike, there's no need to to go to that. That day, similar to most other days, I felt like I didn't get enough done. Like the day got away from me, it got ahead of me, and I feel bad, but actually I was just so exhausted that I just went to sleep anyway. And um, that is such a nice thing, and I hope more people have that than I do. And I, I hope that I can somehow get more of that as I work on continuing a creative career and allowing myself to feel more stable in it all. The same way I feel stable generosity for others, it's like something I really want for myself. So wishing that for everyone. And thanks for being here. And I'll see you all. I'll see you all next week.